Okay, it has been a really long time since I did a video. In fact, 11 days ago, Sierra Carnahan6097 left a comment and said, did you give up on Zettelkasten? Because I hadn't made a video since the last one, which I don't even know, to be honest, when that was. I did give up on Zettelkasten. Did, past tense. Because, possibly, because I have an autistic brain and there are just certain obstacles I can't get around. Like if I cannot wrap my head around something, if there's something that remains confusing for me, I can't get over that until I resolve that. And there were several things about the Zettelkasten that I just couldn't get over. You know, I, I read Scott's book. I watched his videos. I read how to take smart notes, even though that doesn't really tell you a ton about Zettelkasten. I looked at the Zettelkasten archive, Nicholas Lumen's archive. I read other articles. I watched other videos on YouTube and I just kept getting more and more confused. So today I'm going to talk about the numbering of the Zettelkasten, the alphanumeric numbering, because that was probably my number one stopping block. And I finally think I understand it and I can't just keep it to myself because I see a lot of videos talking about the numbering, which means you are probably confused by it too. So hopefully this can help you. And what actually clicked it into gear for me was reading another book about Zettelkasten, Bob Dotto's book. This might be blasphemous. Is that the proper pronunciation of that word? Blasphemous? Uh, if you're a purist like Scott, then you probably hate this book because Bob uses obsidian. I'm not so judgmental. You know what? I don't care what you use to make your Zettelkasten. It's, it's a system for thinking and a, a knowledge system for writing, right? Oops, I said for thinking. That says writing too. Who cares what you use if it works? If it works. And I can tell you that unless you get past the stopping blocks, like the numbering one, it doesn't matter what tool you use because I tried. I tried analog. I rebuilt my system multiple times, I think three times, and I just couldn't get it to click. I did it digitally. I tried this app and I tried this app. I tried Obsidian. I tried Capacities. I tried everything I could find. I even tried Apple Notes. And it just never clicked because I couldn't get past that stopping block. And it's not to say that what is said in this book is dramatically different than what Scott says because they're both pulling from Lumen. Sometimes you just need to hear it in different words from a different person for it to click. So let's, let's talk about what the problem is. The problem is the alphanumeric numbering, right? When we go to Scott's book, the T in Antinet is tree. And he specifically says, you know, it's non-hierarchical. And for those of you maybe who, I have enough trouble pronouncing that word at times, maybe you've never heard that word before. What that means is if this card is here, and this card is the next level down, and this card is the next level down. If this is hierarchical, that means that these have a relationship in that this is the parent, this is the child. This is the parent, this is the child. What that could mean is you say, trees, oak, and then you have a note about oak trees, okay? Now the reason I'm, I find this confusing, I'm sorry, is because even though Scott says that the tree structure is not hierarchical there are things that he does in his system that made me think it is hierarchical when he started talking about okay if this is one 1.1 1 .1 and this is 1.1 a and you go in here and you go oh you know what i want this card here that he insisted that you put not insisted he insinuated that you could try what he does which is to create a zero or negative numbers the problem with this, in my opinion, at least in the way that I took it, by insinuating that 
it's important to be able to put that card to be able to create zeros and, and negatives, that means that this spot matters. That this card being in the spot matters. And if this card being in that spot matters, that's a hierarchy. That's literally the definition of the hierarchy, which means that the places that they are matter. Here's the thing. In Zettelkasten, they don't. Not at all. Not at all. Why? Okay, let's go back to what I was saying. I'm sorry, I'm using imaginary cards. There is stuff written on these for later, but... Again, if we're talking trees, oak, and then uh, oak trees make a lot of acorns. Maybe that's what that note says. This is hierarchical structure. In other words, this is an example of this. This is an example of this. I can't put the acorn note up here because it doesn't make sense up there, right? It only makes sense here in a hierarchical structure. So the place matters. The problem with this is, for the most part, when you order things in a hierarchical order, you're putting them in the standard expected order. Oak is always going to be an example of a tree. You know, if you're putting trees and oak together, it's always that's that's the only expected or logical way to arrange those. These three, we'll say. But the Zettelkasten wants you not to think about things in the way that's expected. The Zettelkasten wants you to not think about the way that things are ordered everywhere else. The purpose of the Zettelkasten is to get you think, thinking differently, to see things differently, because I can find that normal hierarchical structure on the internet, on Wikipedia, in an encyclopedia, in a book, all over the world. But the only place that I can find the strange arrangement of notes that I create in my Zettelkasten is in my Zettelkasten. And that is how it becomes a conversation partner because it becomes a unique identity. But when you arrange things in an expected order, like another thing that Scott does that I don't agree with because I think it, find, it makes things confusing, is using your categories as the academic disciplines. Once again, you're arranging things in an expected order. So what does that mean for us? Let's see. Well, how did I mess this up by <laughs> using those? Let's look at some examples I have here. Actually, before, maybe I should say this. Stop thinking of it as a tree. Stop thinking of it as a hierarchy. Uh, try this. If you're stuck, try this. This is what clicked for me. Think of it as a conversation. The way things happen in a conversation are not arranged in an expected order. The way things happen in a conversation is the way things happen in a conversation. So I went to the store might be the first thing that's said in the conversation. Then the next thing is said is I needed coffee filters and deodorant. And then the next thing is said is I wish the store was in walking distance. Well, when you go to put that in here just to make the arrangement make sense, well, that's not really, it doesn't really have anything to do with that, but it still has something to do with that. So you could put it right there. Notice I said could, because it doesn't really matter that much. You could put it over here if you want. You know, that could be, that could have been your first card. Sorry, you, you wouldn't put it there because, you know, we already talked about that. But if this was the first card, then it would be there because that's the way things happen in a conversation. Then we have the store is six miles away. Mm, yeah, okay, that's that. That's one way I could arrange things. Why are they arranged this way? Because that's the way they happen. The first thing that was said was this, or if you want to use a more real world, world example, the first note that I took when I was reading was on this. And then at a later point, I took this one. And then at a later point, I took this one. And at a later point, I took this one. If they were happened if I read this before this, then this would be A and this would be B. Not because the A and B matters, but that's just the way and the order that it happened. So this is a conversation. This doesn't have a parent-child relationship. All this says is this was said and then this was said afterwards. And they're related in some way, whatever that 
some way means, which we'll get into a little bit more. And then this says, yeah, this this was said, and it has to do with this over here. And it's not it's it's not really related to that. This is like a side point. You understand what I'm saying? So if this is a linear uh, a linear point or train of thought that's being made in a conversation, sometimes you say things that aren't linear in a conversation. So by the way, we also talked about that, which has to do with this, but it's really a different train of thought. This is a conversation. And then the conversation continued on this train of thought for some reason, and we went to here. So when I come to new cards, say that's the way I have things in there. I come to a new card and I say, what's the next thing that was said in this conversation? Our neighborhood grocery store is an HEB plus. Mm, well, there's multiple places I could put that. I could put it here and say that it's related to the store that I went to, or I could, oh yeah, that's right, sorry, let's fix the order of those. <laughs> Just so that they make sense. I could put it here and say, you know what? The store that's six miles away is an HEB plus. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I put it where I feel it fits best. This is something Scott does say over and over again. Put it the place you think it fits the best. Something Lumen said, something Bob Dotto says, something anybody that actually understands Zettelkasten will say. Here's another one. The store is the best price for deodorant. Not really anything to do with that. Not really anything. To, uh, okay. This is about deodorant. This is about deodorant. Here's the other thing, though. All of these could be done differently, right? Maybe I think this train of thought, trains of thought, are about this one particular time that I went to the store. So when I say this store is an, is an ATB plus, I go, well, that's actually a new train of thought. So maybe this is 1.2. It's up to you. How you arrange it is how it will happen. That's why when you find things, when you, when you get in there something that is said over and over again is get in the neighborhood because even when you end up finding this card you end up at this card this is rarely the card you want because this is the expected connection right it's the stuff around there and the more that you have it arranged in a way that makes sense to you at the time the more you're going to have fun playing around and looking at what's in there and finding those surprising connections so another thing that I want to say about this, about the numbering, these first numbers, I mentioned it briefly earlier, Scott uses the academic disciplines for these first numbers, whatever happens before the period here. Pull that closer so you can see what I mean. You could use dashes as well, of course, or are those dashes or forward slashes, I guess that's a slash. You, this is something Bob says that I'd never heard anybody else say. You don't need to say what that number means. You don't, when you go into the Zettelkast and you go, I'm adding this card. Well, actually, where's the 1.1? 1 .1? I'm adding this card. I don't need to decide right now, okay, this, this is 1.1. 1 .1. What does one mean? Does it mean places I went? Does it mean the store? Does it mean... Shopping doesn't mean finance. Who cares? This is a bottom up system, right? So when I get to the next one and I go, I come in with this card and I'm like, hmm, I need coffee and filters, filters and deodorant. By the way, I'm aware that these are not things you would actually put into your Zettelkasten. I put in things that sounded like a conversation so that we could stick with that metaphor. But I need coffee and filters. I could. Okay, I'm looking at this and I'm going, hmm, what's this related to? I don't need to know what 1.1 means. I just need to be able to go in here and go, this seems related to that. So I should add it to the one. And yeah, I want to put it at 1.1. 1, 1. 1. And then when the next thing comes in, I look at it and I go, I wish the store was in walk. That reminds me of this one. So let's keep it as part of that train of thought. I don't need to know what the one means. It can just be a one. Why? because this is non-hierarchical. The number doesn't matter. This is just a way to arrangement. That's the only purpose of this is to give these addresses and places that they live. 
The reason you put cards that you think are related to each other is, like I said, so that when you get somewhere, everything around there is related at least tangentially to what brought you here. That's the only purpose. If I get to a point where I'm like, you know, I noticed I have all of these cards, except for this one. Well, this one's a different train of thought, but these cards all seem to be related to the store. Hmm. Well, I know that I, I probably want to do something with the information about the store. Obviously, in another case, it would be a better example, but that's when you take a card. Find one that's blank. All right, let's just use this one. You take a card and you go store. And then you just list them all out here and you create a menu and you create a collection. So when you go, I want to look at stuff from store, you can just pull this out and go, okay, here's the, the stuff on store. I can put them in whatever order I want here. I can do it in a different order than they are here. I can do it hierarchical on here if I want, but it's not the same thing as this. This is just a conversation. What that means is if I find a card about uh, the symbol for the Democratic Party is the donkey, the symbol for the Republican Party is the elephant, uh, Washington, George Washington was neither a, a Democrat or a Republican. And then later I go, I'm, oh, here's an American politics is a two party system. Oh my God. I'm going to worry myself so much about the hierarchy here. Right? If I had these cards, if I was just, what, what that ends up doing, if you're worrying about hierarchy is you want to sit on the cards till you have all the cards because only when you have all the cards can you figure out how to order them in a hierarchical manner. Two-party system might be the first card you want in a hierarchical system, but the only way you know that is when you have all your cards, which means you're sitting around with piles and piles of cards that are not installed in your Zettelkasten because you're waiting, or you do what I did. You make it one way and then you get all these cards in one area and you go, oh my God, I got to put these in a the right order. I got to put these in a hierarchical order of some sort. So then you recreate and make a new Zettelkasten. You take all the cards and renumber them and waste all this time. When all you re really needed to do was, wow, the first thing I learned is that Democrats are the donkey. Second thing I learned is that the Republicans are elephants. And then I learned, oh, isn't it weird? George Washington was neither a Republican nor a Democrat. Yes, and it's also important to note that it's a two-party system. Hmm, that, that looks like a reasonable order to, to put things in. It's the order they happened in. This is the way I've arranged that order. That's it. And that first number doesn't have to mean anything. It can become something. That's the, We talk about bottom-up systems when we talk about Zettelkasten. Hierarchy is top-down. This, therefore this has to go under that. This is folder system. This is folders, right? Bottom-up means I have this, 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 I have this. Oh wow, those four look like they're related. These two look like they're related. Oh, it emerged, emergent structure. So the, all you're doing with those numbers is allowing a structure to emerge. You don't have to name what that structure is. I do have another point about all this stuff, but I'm going to do it in a separate video because I, to be honest, I recorded this video once last week and the audio sounded like Mickey Mouse for some reason. Problem with the software. I don't know. <laughs> I did it all in one video and I'm glad it actually didn't happen because it was super long. And I think it's harder to digest the really long ones. So digest that. Ask questions, talk to each other, argue about it. It's fine. The only I'm not here to say what the right way and the wrong way is. I'm just here to tell you I had problems. Thinking about it like this is fixing my problems. In fact, I'm going to build a new Zettelkasten from scratch 
and I'll probably start making videos about that. So, by the way, thank you guys for watching these videos. To be honest, I made the videos whenever I made them last, and I, I never signed back into this channel for a really long time. And then I was watching YouTube on one of my other channels, uh, my Curly's Curated channel, which is where I talk about like uh, you know, knives and wallets and stuff like that. I was watching something with that as the user, and it recommended me <laughs> one of my own Zettelkasten videos. And I saw the view number underneath, and I was shocked. I had no idea so many people were watching these, to me, old videos. Uh, the only reason I'm coming back is because it's starting to make sense again. So I think we can have more conversations about Zettelkasten. And I'm probably going to change the name of this channel because I want to use Analog Mind Digital World to do a channel about... Uh, working with paper and stuff like that. And unfortunately, the way that the YouTube algorithm works, if even though I think Zettelkasten fits in that, if I have this channel that's all focused on Zettelkasten and I start doing this content, it just, it all gets messed up and I don't understand it. <laughs> the algorithm just stops recommending everything. So we're just gonna keep this a Zettelkasten only channel. I'll come up with a name that's appropriate for that. It might just be blah, 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 Zettelkasten. Uh, you can also, by the way, go check out my other channel, Read or Die a Slave. It's where I talk about the notes that I'm taking on books and just try to explain what I'm learning from what I'm reading. So that seems like something Zettelcast and people might be interested in. So go check it out. Thank you all for comments. Uh, I haven't replied to any because, like I said, I haven't been signed in. So <laughs> hope you guys, I hope this made sense to you. I really hope it helped you guys. That was my, my biggest hope. 